So I think EcoFlow has knocked it out of the park again. If you're looking for a kind of mid-weight or kind of lightweight power station, solar generator, whatever you want to call it, not necessarily need something to run the whole house. Maybe you're running tools remotely, or if you just have like a van life set up or a small cabin, a tiny home, this might work if you're only requiring 120 volt power. This is the all new Delta 2 Max. Now I think it should have been called the Delta Max 2 because they already have the Delta 2. It just gets confusing. They have their whole Delta series, which is the Delta, Delta Max, and Delta Pro. And this is the mid-range for that Delta series from EcoFlow. I really like it. So this is the Delta 2 Max. This is the Delta 2 Max expansion battery. And I've been doing tests on this for a number of weeks. I have also the Delta 1 Max as well as two expansion batteries for that. And I've done a review on that in the past. The Delta 1 Max had lithium ion batteries and this has lithium iron phosphate, also known as LFP, Life PO4. Now there are some things that I do dislike about this unit. So you do wanna make sure you stay to the end of this. But I'm gonna go through the whole testing of this. I'm gonna show you charging on a clear sunny day, how well it performs in real life. Can we really get the thousand watt solar input on this? This has two MPPTs in it. We're gonna test it out and see how well it actually performs to see if this would be a good unit for you. Only you can decide that, but then I'll give you my report on if I think it's worth buying. So stay tuned for this. Let's go ahead and get into the EcoFlow Delta II Max review. As far as what comes out of the box, obviously the expansion battery is separate. So in the box with just the Delta II Max, you're gonna have the unit. You're gonna have a bunch of pieces of paper here. You've got a quick start guide. You've got your user manual, which is confusing to me because the first page is nothing. This page is all your disclaimers. And then this page is your specs. And then we already get into German. I mean, this is like the shortest user manual I've ever seen. So they must be more reliant on the quick start guide. And honestly, that's perfectly fine because no one ever reads these anyway. I mean, except for the quick start guide. But if you want to know all the specs, they are listed on the second page here in the user manual. I guess it's the third page. But either way, this has a lithium iron phosphate battery. It is a 2048 watt hour capacity and up to 3000 cycles. Now people focus on the cycles way, way, way too much. For me, cycles aren't nearly as important as how much can I discharge from it? How fast can I recharge it from solar? Because I'm thinking off grid or grid down situations because this is about preparedness. And then as well, how expandable is the system? And the thing that comes in the box is the AC cable. It is able to charge up to 1800 watts from a wall charger or gas generator. This is the car charger, which is rated to eight amps. So it's a hundred watts input. And then it's got this DC 5521. It's DC 5521 is this cable here. Comment down below, seriously, if you use this cable, comment down below what you use it for. The only thing I've heard these things used for is CPAPs and or converting it to a cigarette lighter port, but it already has a cigarette lighter port. I wanna get over everything that's in the box. There are no solar panel adapters. You've got your warranty card, DIY instructions, double your capacity, all these little leaflets in here. It really is frustrating to me that they don't include an XT60i to MC4 adapter. Now XT60i is the orange cable and then the yellow is the XT60. Notice that the XT60i has this extra pin whereas the, the normal XT60 does not have this extra pin. And that just allows for more current. So current is amps or also represented by an I in some charts. But anyway, it frustrates me that EcoFlow doesn't include solar chargers because literally to have these made in China, it's like two bucks, if that, right? I think EcoFlow is shooting themselves in the foot by not including those. It costs them next to nothing to include them and it increases the betterment of the user experience. Rant over. Now all the specs are listed here on top of the Delta II Max. On the front here, we've got our screen. And yes, I do have this icon that shows me that there is an error or something. It's a tool showing that it needs repair or something like that. But I've got four USB-A, two USB-C at 100 watts. I can turn on the USB ports right here. I've got my fans along the side for cooling. And on the back side, we've got our charging inputs. We have two XT60i connectors. Each one of these is to an MPPT charge controller. It's a maximum power point tracking. It's just the best solar input computer that can go in here. And you've got two of them, each rated to 11 to 60 volts and 15 amps, which makes it pretty easy to max these out. 
by putting up to 500 watts of solar. So the easiest way to get 500 watts input is by connecting three 200 watt panels. I like to use the rigid 200 panels from poweredportablesolar.com. That's my website. I put on there the exact kits and systems that I personally use and recommend. So if you want to know what those are, go visit over there. But we're gonna test to see if we can get 500 watts input on each of these. I've got a perfectly clear sunny day and I've got the panels out ready for that. Then we have our C14 plug right here. The C14 is the receptacle of the C13 plug right here. You guys didn't know you'd be learning all sorts of plug types in this video. But this will do up to 1800 watts input, which is very impressive, which means you can charge this whole thing in just over an hour, about an hour and 15 to 20 minutes or so. Once it reaches 80%, the input rate slows down because simply if you have a battery that's 100% or is at 0% and it's rated to 2000 watt hours basically, you can easily fit 1800 watts worth of energy going into that because the capacity is more than 1800 watt hours. But once you get to that last little bit, it's hard to fit a larger volume of energy into a smaller space kind of simplifying things here. And so because of that, it slows down the energy going in because there's not as much space left in the battery. Now the expansion battery, I love that it has this storage space right up on top here, and it uses a simple XT150 cable. You can buy longer ones, but these XT150 plugs are really, really hefty. And this is the same one that you use with the smart dual fuel generator, which I've got as well. I've got a video coming out about that. And you can connect the smart fuel generator to these different systems, whether it's the Delta Pro or the Delta Max. And then of course, we don't wanna forget, we've got our regulated cigarette lighter port here, and then our DC 5521s here. And I was actually using this earlier to run my Glacier. This is the EcoFlow portable DC fridge. It has a battery built into it. And right now I've got it charging up on solar. I'm at 71% and it's only 11 o'clock. I mean, this was at 5% this morning because we had horrible weather yesterday. I didn't get any charge. So this ran for two days. And then I have a clear sunny day today. And in like two hours, we're up to 71% from 5%. Really like that. And I'm just using the EcoFlow bifacial 220 watt solar panel here on that unit. This has two zones in it. It can do fridge and freezer. It's got a ice maker in here, as well as a battery. You can charge from your car, solar panels, all of that. Let's get into the testing of this. First of all, I wanna do a heavy drain. I'm gonna connect this battery to this unit, and we're gonna put a heavy drain on it and see if it can really handle 2,400 watts output consistently for at least 15 minutes. And if it can do that, then for me, it's totally good for running high power output devices. And then we'll charge it up from solar. We gotta start with 600 watts into one input, see if it works. That's just three 200 watt 12 volt panels. We'll see how it works. I do love this storage compartment up here. But what I'm gonna do, this battery is at 100%, and the main unit, this is about 50 pounds, by the way, this is like 40 pounds. Uh, this one's at 88%, and you can see that tool mark that's up there, um, saying that it needed some repairs or something like that. The firmware is up to date, and I have confirmed with customer service and tech support that's there and it's fine. I don't know why it's there, but it is what it is. There are two battery expansion ports on here. I'm gonna go ahead and connect to the first one. By the way, I'm on TikTok now, just Minuteman Prep on TikTok. If you're interested, go check it out there. It's a lot more short content, so that way if you want to get a lot of information in a short amount of period, go check it out. I'd truly love to have you guys over there as well. And those who support me on Patreon, you guys make all of this possible. Thank you so much. So if you want to be a supporter of the channel and get direct access to me, go to patreon.com slash Minuteman Prep. Okay, so I've changed my setup here. The expansion battery is meant to lock in. There's actually a groove here on the bottom that's meant to lock this in. It is designed to stack, which is really nice. The original Delta Pros and Delta One Max were not. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this back in to that battery port. And now we see this battery sign show up here. And this is our connectivity. So I do have this connected to my phone app. Output is 1540. And then I need to add a little bit more to get close to that 2400 watt output. So we grab another heat gun. I'm gonna put this on a little bit lower setting. Oh, we hit 2400 per second. Okay, we're at 2390. We're jumping between like 2300 and 2400. It's good enough for me. I'm gonna go ahead and let these run for about 15 minutes and we'll see if there's any issues. It's actually been 27 minutes. Down to 54% here, 68% here. 
Go ahead and turn those off right there. So it ran for 27 minutes nonstop without any issues. Definitely very good, basically twice as long as I was originally planning. And we can see now that there's still a balancing act going on between these. This battery is discharging into this battery, so they will get pretty close to the same state of charge. They don't always get the exact same, and that's pretty normal. If you have a huge difference where one is staying at like 100%, the other one is staying at 50%, then you wanna charge the other one to match whatever the higher percentage is or drain the higher one down to the lower one, then reconnect them, restart the system, and that usually will rebalance them if they don't auto balance, but usually they rebalance on their own like this. This is my solar panel array that I just used for testing lots of different things. So I've got three of these panels connected in series. Let's go see what kind of voltage we're getting. Got my fluke meter set to volts on DC. Wow, look at that, 56.5 volts. I expected it to be much higher. So perfect, we're within range. I also forgot to mention earlier that there's this switch here and you can see on the diagram, it has a slow and fast charge AC speed. So if you wanna charge at 1800 watts, you flip it over. If you want it to be a slower speed, flip it over to the right and that gets you different charge speeds without having to go into the app. I'm gonna go ahead and connect this XT60i right here into PV1. Put everything together right here. And let's see what we get. Now it's max input is 500 watts. I have 600 watts connected, getting 472 watts right now. That's actually, I'm totally good with that. It's really common for solar input to only be even as close to 80% of the rated output whereas this is above 95% of the rated output. So I'm totally good with that. So we know we're about 470 watts. One of the cool things you can do with these clamp meters is this clamp here is designed to be able to test amps or current that is running through a wire. So I've got this set to DC amps. You wanna take the negative wire, put it right through. You can see we're getting the reading of 10.9 amps right here, almost 11 amps going through. And so if you wanna know exactly what volts are going through, you just take the watts input, which is 474 divided by 10.9, and we're getting 43.5 amps going through right now. So your question may be, why were we getting about 56 volts when we first checked it, and now it's down to around 43 volts? That's the difference between VOC on your panel, the back, there's a sticker. VOC is your volts open circuit. That's when there's no load, when they are not doing any work, like charging a battery, your volts will be higher. And then when it starts working, the volts will drop, typically to around the VMP, which is volts maximum power. And that's gonna be how many volts the panels are gonna be outputting while under load, doing work like charging the batteries. So when it comes to charge parameters, before you connect, your VOC has to be below the rated input. And then after you connect, it needs to be above the minimum rated input. So VOC is before you connect, don't go over the max input. And VMP is don't go under the minimum input with your solar panels. And we hit 481. So we are getting really close to the 500 watts input. This is incredible, I like it. Now a lot of people get hung up on the term solar generator. That's the loose term, the name that has been given to these systems because it makes it simple for people to understand. It's the exact same thing as when you say to your family, hey, everybody get in the car, but you're actually getting in a van or a truck. You're not actually getting in a car or even a sedan or a coupe. You're not being specific on the exact thing that you're using. People say it all the time, hey, on your iPhone, look this up. An iPhone is a specific model of a brand so I don't say, hey, will you look this up on your Android? You just say, hey, look this up on your smartphone. It's just a general term that's used to make it simple for people. So another term is power station, which makes a lot of sense. And I'm totally good with that. I call them both, pick a camp and stick with it and then forget about the camps, okay? The reason I like these solar generators is because of security and long-term effectiveness. I have multiple generators and I've converted all of them to be dual fuel so that way I can use propane or gasoline. And the reason that is, is because for emergency preparedness, one, I want either multiple fuel types and or just propane. That's what I majority of the time run them on because propane doesn't go bad, it's easy to store. And even in grid down situations, oftentimes it's easier to get than gasoline because the vast majority of people are getting gasoline for their generators. So whether I'm going to Home Depot or a gas station and I'm swapping out tanks, or in my case, I have a 500 gallon tank that has a refill option on it so I can refill the small tanks. Or 
you can oftentimes go to a gas station where they have a big tank and can directly pump it into your smaller tank. It just gives a variety of options. The reason I moved into solar generators, one of the biggest reasons, was many years ago I went through a hurricane when we lived in Texas. And we were without power for weeks. Well, not us, we were prepared. We had a gasoline generator at the time. Solar generators were really not a thing at the time. So I was a teenager at the time and I specifically remember when my dad walked into the room and said, hey, I just poured in the last gas can of fuel into the generator. After this, we will not have any more power. If I remember correctly, it was about week four. So the details may be a little here and there, but that's what I remember. And it was like an hour after that, that the power got restored to our section of the grid. It was weeks into the aftermath of the hurricane and we were actually helping our neighbors run their fridges. And so it really dawned on me that we needed a solution that was longer lasting and easy to use and especially for security reasons, silent. And so the beauty of the solar generators is I can run them in my garage or in my bedroom. There is no off gassing, there's no fumes, there's no anything and they're darn near silent. At the very most, you'll get these fans blowing inside of here and that's only under high load. Right now I've got about 500 watts of input going in and I can feel the fans blowing. In fact, I'll put my mic right next to it. There's nothing. You really can't hear anything going on. So the fume free, the safety, the long lasting, the cycles, I mean this is going to be 10 to 20 years before I have to even think about replacing something on here. And so the reality is I never need to worry about replacing it. And that's just in my opinion. But with a gas generator, I need to know how many hours it's been running. I need to check the oil. I need to keep extra oil on hand. I have to keep fuel on hand. I have to keep enough fuel for whatever emergency I'm preparing for. For me, in my opinion, the best thing to prepare for is an EMP attack. Because if you prepare for that, you're pretty much prepared for everything. So we're talking minimum two years of no power from the grid. If that's the case, I know the sun's going to show up every single day. Yeah, it may be cloudy. There may be alternate things going on. But that's where I use my gas generator as a backup to my solar generator because this with the fast wall charger that's built in I use my gas generator to recharge this in about two and a half hours with this extra battery and then this whole setup right here with just a fridge and a freezer easily gives me 24 to 36 hours of runtime depending on the ambient temperature how full they are there's a lot of factors there the point being I can exchange about two and a half hours of fuel in my gas generator for 24 to 36 hours of runtime off of here and especially in this case where I'm using the EcoFlow products, I have their dual fuel smart generator. I can literally connect that up to this through the other XT150 port on the side here. So I can have one battery, one main unit, connect the smart generator to the other side here, and I can tell it to automatically start recharging as soon as this whole setup hits 10% and to stop recharging when it hits 80% or 100%. I can set that in the app very easily and that becomes a fully automated system. So I have a propane tank, which is connected to my smart generator. My smart generator is connected to the second port on here. And then this will recharge and operate off of solar and the batteries and everything like normal without the smart generator running. And only when I hit that bottom threshold level will the smart generator automatically kick on, recharge this while also doing solar input to the set parameter that I have on the top, maybe 80% and then it will automatically turn off and I will start draining again off the batteries. It's completely automated. It's a quiet smart generator as well. And that has fumes and noise and all those things, but it works perfectly with the Delta II, the Delta II Max and the Delta Pro systems to make sure that they are operating continuously in the worst conditions possible. As usual, I'm gonna keep doing tests on this to see how well it performs over time. That's what I do with all these systems here is I continue to run tests on them month after month until I find failures in them. So that way I can report them to you guys, just like I found recently with my Delta Pros. But EcoFlow has done an extremely good job of taking care of my Delta Pros. Everything's been under warranty and they've been paying for the shipping back and forth and all the repairs and have had really good communication. So I've been very pleased with the customer service from EcoFlow. I know everybody's gonna have different experiences, but overall that's the feedback that I get. And with us working with EcoFlow on the dealer side as well, they've been very good to work with both as a customer and as a dealer. If you want to get the best deals on the solar generators that I recommend, go to poweredportablesolar.com. This is one of the best ways to be prepared in my opinion, and that's why I like reviewing this equipment for you guys. See y'all in the next video.